chapter 2. We're going through the Bible verse by verse. Paul is writing to his successor of the church in Ephesus. Timothy. And we'll continue. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. He's, he's in prison at Rome. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore I adore all things for the sake of the elect, that they may uh, also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Note what he says here. He says, remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, the seed of David, and in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 22, Jesus refers to himself as the root and the offspring of David. He's saying, I am your Messiah. I am the Jewish Messiah. I am the originator of the Davidic throne and the expression of it. I am both the origin of of David, and I am also his offspring. And so the Israeli Jewish Messiah, he says, that's who I am spoken of in the Old Testament. Now, Jesus, the God-man, the offspring, the seed of David, absolutely man, the origin of, of the throne of David and the expression of the throne of David. Uh, and so here we see Jesus, the seed, the seed of David, he's absolutely man. You have to understand that God is God of love, but he's a God of justice. And he has to punish sin because he's pure and perfect in every way. And the offering on the cross had to be a man, for it's man who offended God. And the offering on the cross also had to be God because God uh, requires absolute perfection. That's why Jesus, is important to remember, was both man and God to fulfill his justice. The just and the justifier of mankind. He who is love himself. And so, as we look at things, we see as Paul writes to his successor, uh, Timothy, his son in the gospel, uh, he, what he's telling here is to never adulterate the gospel. Never make it something it is not. To, to not make the, the gospel complicated. And you see, the sages of this day, the wise of this world today, in their pride, they feel they must surround its simplicity with a mist of human thought and speculation. And that's what we see in the pulpits in America today. It's making everything, uh, making the gospel so watered down. This is what you're going to, what you're going to see, is that men, uh, they want novelties. They don't just stick with the plain truth. The so-called cultivated mind hungers for change from a 